Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're going to talk about YouTube and Netflix and how Netflix is getting its ass whooped by YouTube, apparently. So this really shouldn't surprise anyone. I mean, there's no paywall on YouTube and YouTube has been around for a very long time, but it is really interesting in that it could explain why Hollywood, why showrunners try so hard on some level to discredit YouTubers because there is potentially a much larger audience. I mean, it's very possible and I think very likely that YouTubers talking about certain shows or movies, you know, even if it's negatively, they could actually get more views than Netflix gets uh, on the show itself. Yeah, you know, so that would be that would be really interesting. We don't have a view count. We don't know how many views Netflix shows actually get. Now, Netflix is the top streamer uh, by a landslide, but YouTube is still king. Now, I have to wonder if Netflix won't at some point decide to pull a YouTube and allow people to upload their own content to Netflix. That would be interesting um, because I could totally see them getting into that because we see how nobody seems to be happy staying in their own lane, right? Like everybody wants to be every other social media platform. So like somebody does really well at shorts like TikTok, and then YouTube decides it wants to chase shorts and Instagram decides it wants to chase shorts or they decide they, you know, YouTube wants to chase after uh, community. So they allow community posts to, to try to pull people away from Twitter. But Twitter is the best at what Twitter does. Facebook, before they bought a whole bunch of apps, was the best at what they do. Uh, Netflix is the best at streaming movies and TV shows. And YouTube is the best at user-generated content. Unfortunately, YouTube now is also trying to chase television. They want people to just buy their TV and they seem to be courting more TV deals. And they are kind of pushing the U out of YouTube. So yeah, you know, somebody else comes along and says, Hey, you want to start posting your content here? People might take them up on the offer, but let's, uh, let's talk about this before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants guys. Uh, speaking of Twitter, go out to Twitter. We've been doing some live streams out there experimenting with it. I think we might stream out there because YouTube doesn't really seem to like live streams unless you have a, a scheduled time. Um, <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. This is actually coming from. Twitter. Speaking of which, uh, Colin and Samir, Hank Green stylist. Uh, yeah, audiences are spending more time watching YouTube on their TVs than Netflix. And uh, they got it from Lucas Shaw. Lucas Shaw, who writes for uh, Bloomberg, put this up and he talked about how the most popular streaming show on TV is NCIS. And then he's talking about the 10 most popular original series and they almost almost all of them are on Netflix. So Netflix is way ahead of Disney Plus and HBO Max. And Amazon's actually like in fourth place, which is very surprising. Hulu is under that. Peacock, Apple, and Paramount. This is why Paramount is trying to merge with somebody else, I think, to survive because they're way at the bottom of the list. They said, but Netflix isn't the most popular streaming service in the US. That would be YouTube, which surpassed Netflix a couple of years ago and has never looked back. Um, yeah, so it's not really new news, but it is worth uh, mentioning, I think, because YouTube, why it is becoming such a battleground, I think. Why Hollywood is trying so hard to shut up YouTube critics is they know how much pull YouTube actually has, that more people are watching YouTube. They're saying teens are watching more YouTube than they are watching anything else. Um, so this article is coming from Business Insider uh, a month or so ago. Uh, saying um, that Hollywood should be terrified of YouTube, not Netflix. And I think they are. I really think they are. Like, there's so much drama around YouTubers criticizing Hollywood. So I think they are afraid. They said Netflix has won the streaming wars, uh, but it overlooks a bigger player in the media, YouTube. The Google platform beats Netflix in viewing and ads. It's also winning in areas important to younger people, which could be devastating for Hollywood. Yeah, it's become accepted wisdom in some circles that Netflix has won the streaming wars. However, 
Uh, focusing on Netflix's dominance in Hollywood overlooks a bigger player, YouTube, and YouTube's dominance could have dire consequences for Netflix's competitors. By view time and advertising, YouTube is winning hands down. In time watched on the big screen, the metric that matters to big brand advertisers, YouTube led view time for almost all of 2023, according to Nielsen. Its advantage wasn't lost on Netflix co-founder and former CEO Reed Hastings, who name-checked YouTube as a threat to Netflix. And it's done so without traditional Hollywood content. Oh, don't worry. They're trying to change that. Well, remember when they did YouTube Red and like all these YouTubers were supposed to be getting their own TV shows and they were terrible? Like, yeah. YouTube also has a giant ads business. It reported $9.2 billion in revenue just in Q4. Netflix, which is just getting going and selling ads, isn't even close. YouTube is winning in areas that matter to Gen Z. Uh-oh. I thought that they all watch TikTok. Gen Z users enjoyed user-generated video almost as much as TV and movies uh, research shows. That, that's, that's stupid. Like, everybody knows that Gen Z watches other Gen Zers, millennials do stupid shit on the internet. YouTube isn't a big player in live sports, an area that's significantly less popular with Gen Z than the population overall. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, so let's see here. We've got broadcast cable or TV streaming unauthorized streaming another way i do not watch live sporting event that's funny unauthorized streaming uh, yeah they aren't a significant player in premium entertainment content where hollywood has traditionally lived in netflix is the runway a runaway streaming leader they said about youtube and they haven't competed for in-market nationally televised sports like amazon uh, those are content areas that are losing their share of young audiences viewing time netflix's long-term risk is kids watch Mr. Beast on YouTube instead of The Crown on Netflix. And speaking of, uh, speaking of Mr. Beast, he actually chimed in on this thread and said, if only there was a way Netflix could have gotten some of that audience to come over. I am guessing uh, that he probably tried to shop his show to Netflix first and they didn't take it and Amazon took it and they paid like $100 million for it, if I had to guess. Um. Jimmy really wanted that Netflix money. Chill, you're going to get me fired. Yeah, so uh, this is interesting, though. Uh, Andy uh, Signore, why do they keep lowering our revenue even when the views go up? That is a damn good question. Um, I th there, there are a lot of things going on with YouTube. I think, I think in some level, the ads maybe aren't paying as much or they're taking. I'm seeing a lot of lower quality ads, and I have to wonder if maybe... Hollywood isn't spending as much on YouTube as they used to because we used to see a lot more promote. Well, we used to see a lot of promotion for streaming services, right? We used to see all kinds of ads for streaming services and like the streaming war has been won already. And a lot of these companies are cutting back. So we're not seeing as much. Plus we don't have a lot of big like temple movies coming out, but a lot of the ads I'm seeing are kind of like garbage ads, like, really dicey looking medical stuff and uh, you know, a lot of like AI crap. And I'm like, these are cheesy ads. These are the kind of ads that you would see on like the, the Patriot bunker supply depot or whatever that advertises on your dad's favorite podcast. Like that's the kind of stuff they seem to be putting on YouTube that and lots of shitty mobile apps, but those shitty mobile app companies have a lot of money to spend. Uh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying YouTube has become a media giant without Hollywood content. This is the big one. Like people are choosing YouTube over Hollywood content and it's hard to justify spending the massive amounts of money that people are spending on producing content for streaming services and linear TV when somebody recording out of their basement can get more watch time. Now, Mr. Beast, he's become basically a television production at this point. But you know what I'm saying? Like, and then the weird thing about it is Mr. Beast really, I mean, he was big before, but he really blew up with the Squid Game stuff. So uh, ripping off Netflix, making fun of Netflix, made his channel blow up. He probably got more, he probably got more watch time off of his Squid Game videos than Netflix got off of Squid Game. And that's actually one of their biggest shows. So many a media dismiss or overlook YouTube because it doesn't look like a Hollywood player. YouTube funded original content for a while until it decided it sucked. No, <laughs> until it decided it would rather leave the content making to creators and share the ad revenue with them. That is actually what Netflix should do. I'm not talking necessarily user, just like everyday user generated content, but I think they should work 
with uh, cut deals with these other studios and kind of lure them back to the platform. Because I think the reason everybody took their ball and started their own streaming service was they thought they could do better. And it's obvious they can't do better. A lot of them are going to bankrupt their companies trying to chase streaming. And they could have just put their stuff, Paramount could have just put their stuff on Netflix and they'd be in a much better place right now. That money went to the likes of Mr. Beast, not Martin Scorsese. It's TV business. YouTube TV is a bundle of other people's channels. For some advertisers, YouTube's lack of premium sheen is a reason to stay away. <laughs> Controversy. People say what they actually think. We can't have that. We can't have that. Uh, even now, it's like you cannot say what you really think on YouTube anymore. I mean, 10 years ago, yeah, and that was even kind of the tail end of it. But uh, they really crack down on what you can say here. And it's because of advertisers. I, I, I think part of it is, is uh, social justice, but I think a lot of it is advertisers. They just, the advertisers are gun shy. They don't want to get canceled. So they don't want to be called out like, oh my God, Coca-Cola is sponsoring Alex Jones or something. So yeah, they, they're, they're staying, staying away. Um, funding content this way keeps YouTube's gross profit margins nice and even versus the Hollywood model with its fixed upfront programming costs. And YouTube TV is now the fourth largest pay TV service in the country, more than 8 million subs. YouTube likes its model of funding creator content as it ensures a continual stream of hits. Uh, Brian Albert, Google's managing director of U.S. video deals and creative works, has said that's a massive difference between the legacy studio produced model where you hope you get enough hits to sustain viewership. And the uh, CEO emphasized this week that he's committed to supporting creators long form storytelling and that he sees YouTube's future in the living room. Now, this is this is interesting because the one thing that YouTubers are afraid of, or at least the old, old school uh, YouTubers is shorts because shorts seem to have taken over the channel and it seems like a totally different app, right? Like if you, if you get on the shorts track, you're going to have your followers for shorts, but you're not going to, they're not going to find your long form content and vice versa. It's very, very weird. We've done some experimenting with shorts on another channel and it's like a totally different audience. It's like a totally different uh, track that you get on. Creators are thinking about how to optimize their content for the living room. It's easy to see why. It's where their audience is watching. I was surprised. I thought most people, like I usually watch YouTube on my phone or on my iPad. I thought most of you watched us on your phones or something. I didn't think we were TV worthy. <laughs> you know, so apparently people are watching us on TV. But like, and I looked at, I looked at the numbers. I'm like, yeah, most, most people are watching us on TV, which is really freaking weird. I didn't think you would because our content is just, it's news. It, you know, burns off and then we just move on to the next thing, right? But yeah, people are watching us on TV. YouTube's continued success isn't guaranteed though. They face tough competition from other tech companies for creator loyalty and viewers. It's getting beaten in short form by TikTok because that's all it does in Reels. Uh, Google also has a big lead in AI, which powers the recommendations that drive watch time. And that actually is hurting as many creators as it's supposedly helping actually it's driving watch time. So what it's doing is it's recommending videos that are most likely to get watched. It, it's not necessarily helping. I don't think this is my personal opinion. It's not helping individual creators. It's basically like, Oh, you like that video. Instead of showing you more videos by that creator, we're going to recommend a whole bunch of other videos by a bunch of other people. So like 20 people might get, 20 views versus one person, one creator getting those 20 views. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're basically spreading everybody out. Plus they have that for you thing now at the top of your page, which I guess you can turn that off, but they recommend the content. And I, I think it's based on AI. I think it's based on the algorithm and uh, they recommend the video that they think you're the most likely to watch based on what you've watched on that channel. So it might be a video that's like six months old. And I've had that happen. I've gone to the For You page on our page. And I'm like, this is old news. Like, this isn't even relevant anymore. But that's the first video that shows up because it's like, oh, yeah, well, you watched an update on this. So you might want to watch this six-month-old video. <laughs> you know? Uh, being an open platform is another vulnerability that opens up to brand safety problems, guys. People speak in their minds. Regulatory threats and high content moderation costs. Hollywood people grumble a lot about Netflix. 
Uh, they released fewer originals in 2023 while it takes everyone else's licensed content. They still have a huge sway over what, what gets made and what gets seen, which opens up to criticism. Uh, one of the biggest knocks is it used to take chances on niche shows and give prestige filmmakers free reign, but lately it just seems to want shows, uh, shows for the masses. Yeah, um, and we said that was probably going to happen because they can't afford to spend millions of dollars on something that nobody's going to watch. I wish to God Netflix had the view count on everything on the platform. That would be very telling, wouldn't it? If you could actually look at an episode of a TV show and be like, yeah, this thing only has 2,000 views and they spent how much money? Like then you could go find the article where, oh, we hired so-and-so to do this and we paid them X millions of dollars and it got like 2,000 views. And this is kind of what killed like G4 TV and all these other like highly polished turds you know, they think they can come into this space and just basically put a sheen on it and they're going to get views. And they don't understand. You have to build an audience up. I mean, we haven't been grinding at this nearly as long as some other people. We've been doing it for like five or six years. There are people that have been doing it for over a decade. You know, and you got to put content out every day or regularly. Not we put content out every day pretty much, but, you know, you do have to be pretty regular in your, your updates and you have to connect with the audience. And thank you, by the way, uh, you know, for inviting us into your living rooms or phones or wherever. Even if you're hate watching us, we still love you. We still love you. Clownfish loves you. Uh, like Elmo. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's just like, it's, you know, people can smell fake. And the more polished it looks, a lot of times it's just like, oh my God, this, like, look at Nerdist, right? like Nerdist with their freaking sets and it looks like a talk show. And they, I remember, I still remember that interview they had with Mark Wade a couple of years ago. And it was like, nobody watched it. Like it was this highly polished, you know, like uh 2020 looking thing. And it was just, nobody watched it because it, it, it's fake. It's fake. It's why nobody's watching it. Maybe Hollywood should be more worried about YouTube. The real threat is that Netflix and YouTube uh, Netflix and YouTube dominate and everyone else fights over a tiny slice of the pie. So basically everybody's complaining about Netflix taking everything, but in reality it's YouTube. Just take a look at the teen viewing stats. Netflix has lost a small bit of ground with teens in terms of video consumption in the past few years, but was still a close second to YouTube. YouTube account for 29% of teens video consumption in the fall of 2023, edging out Netflix at 28%, and Hulu was a distant third at 7%. Those are some brutal stats for the rest of Hollywood. Everyone in Hollywood is scared of Netflix, but YouTube and the non-Hollywood video revolution it represents is the far bigger long-term threat. That's interesting. Yeah, and they are afraid of people like us, especially people like us that speak out against Hollywood. And we've seen it time and time again. Why would they come down from on high and mess with YouTubers? Because more people are probably watching our videos, dunking on their movies and TV shows than are watching the actual movies and TV shows. And it's bad press. You know, they're not going to go after some hole in the wall, little blog, but they see somebody has got 100, 200,000 views on a video shitting on their TV show that maybe only got 50,000 views and they spent millions of dollars working on it and they have to make a case as to why they should get season two. That's why they're going to mess with you. That's why they come down from on high. Or, or you could produce the content, put it on YouTube and let the public decide if they like it or not. That would take some balls. Put your show on YouTube. Just put it on YouTube. Spend the millions of dollars and put it on YouTube. At least then you have a chance of seeing whether or not it is, it is uh, legitimately popular. I'm just saying, if you had the balls, you'd do it. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.